Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we are going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're specifically going to talk about Wizards Presents. Really fascinating. So, one of the things, so I could not be more happy about what happened in 2022 to Dungeons and Dragons news. So, a lot is happening with Dungeons and Dragons and information about Dungeons and Dragons. If you ain't been paying attention, holy guacamole, there is a massive market for Dungeons and Dragons news, right? Now, the reality is the vast majority of that news for Dungeons and Dragons comes out right here on YouTube. And there are, um, this isn't a joke. There are a thousand D&D commentators out there easily. I'm just one of a, I'm a, one, I'm a millennial. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a millennial D&D commentator. There are a thousand of us easily. Not, not a joke, right? And the reality is um, it, it's competitive, right? Everybody's giving their two cents on Dungeons and Dragons news. Now, the reality is, at the beginning of this year, and definitely in 2021, news for Dungeons and Dragons was a hot mess, okay? Basically, most of the time, it was just getting leaked online, and it didn't seem that Wizards of the Coast had any control over, over their own news, right? They weren't, we didn't get news from Dungeons and Dragons from Wizards of the Coast. We got news from Nerd Immersion when he covered a leak, or from, you know, uh, Professor Dungeon Master when he deigned to cover it a week later, right? Or when um, Ginny D, you know, uh, wasn't doing a cosplay that week. You know, it's it's all over, right? And it was a mess. It was a mess. It was all over. But this year, it changed, okay? d and Direct was huge. There's like, hey, Dragonlance, hey, Spelljammer, hey, you ready? Let's go, right? And it, it was a really, really big deal. And, uh, you know, it was really quite interesting the way all of it, you know, kind of flowed out. And D&D, D&D Direct was the first time Dungeons and Dragons was like, we're going to tell you first, and we're going to fill this space with news that matters, news that matters, right? And d and and Wizards Presents was the same thing. We got to know every book that's coming out in 2023. That's fantastic. We also got to know that the MTG times d and right? MTG times d and right? Magic the Gathering times d and This was first, this first came out, right? When Adventures uh, for Magic the Gathering Adventures in Forgotten Realms pre-released, they actually released a notebook. And on it, there was, and in that notebook, it was, it was a, it was a clarion call the future of magic is Dungeons and Dragons. The future of Dungeons and Dragons is magic. It's one product. That's what this, and it, it quite literally was one product in the notebook. The notebook said MTG times D and D, and it had a picture of a. I can never say the name of Dritz's cat. Guinevere, Gwen Carvin, Ravin, yeah, that. Uh, so you know, Dritz Doerden and his his panther right, are on the cover, and when you open that notebook, there are sleeves in it, right, and then there's grid paper in it, and every single page has the Magic the Gathering symbol and the red amp, and and the D&D ampersand, right, they're like, it's one thing, and that was all over Wizards Presents, it was Dungeons and Dragons is magic, magic is Dungeons and Dragons, and the reason for this is Strixhaven, Strixhaven knocked it out of the park, right, is like, hey, here's super dope art that we, because we got the art from Magic, and the art in Magic is a hundred times better than the art in D&D. Oh, and this is going to be available as an amazing book, which will bring all the Harry Potter energy to your Dungeons and Dragons game, and actually give ten levels to every single caster class, and established feats are in the backgrounds, right? It's it's huge. Like, Strixhaven was huge. And they're like, there's going to be more of this. We are bringing magic into Dungeons and Dragons. We are bringing Dungeons and Dragons into magic. And it and the benefits of it are huge. Right? So I was so, so happy with, with, with Wizards Presents. They did a fantastic job. Let's talk about some things I didn't like. Where was B. David Walters? Right? I love that dude, man. He was awesome. He was really good in D&D Direct. And he was not there. Right, and I didn't really like that because I think the people they replaced him with, who is that lady in the lime green suit? I don't know. Have you ever seen her before? She did a passable job 
of reporting the news and keeping things going, right? Um, I think the gentleman was Dave Wong, and he is uh, he is a movie star from Live Action Mulan. Very cool, right? Um, by the way, the the lineup, the connections between Hollywood and Nuns and Dragons continue to grow stronger, right? So right there you see an, a star from the live action Mulan movie does a great job. He, he did a really good job. I like seeing him. But I didn't like that B. David Walters was gone, right? And the lady in the lime green suit, I ch genuinely have no idea who she was or why she was on stage. And I, I just I felt like that was kind of a slot that should have went to somebody else, right? Like just somebody I knew or somebody who had more charisma, or somebody who just seemed to have a reason to be there, right? Um, and then uh, Ginny D was fantastic. That is, a, you know, that is a great promotion of a, you know, a D and D slogger, man. She's been slogging on D and D content for years, like three, four, five years now. Easy, right? And uh, and she earned her slot. The other thing is, I'm really excited. I really think that Ginny D, uh, she's in like the cosplay game, I think it's hard to stay in the cosplay game over year after year after year that gets more and more difficult, right? Because there's a lot of competition in that space, and I think Ginny D's days as a cosplayer may be limited, right? Only maybe, maybe a year or two more at most, right? Um, and But, I would love to see her shift onto the design team and actually start to help design Dungeons & Dragons. I think that's a good uh, progression, right? You know, so Teen Phoenix went through a progression. You know, she uh, she worked for Wizards of the Coast as well. And the reality is we really need uh, solid female designers to be stepping up and creating amazing content and, and doing the right thing well, you know. And so I, I think Ginny D would be a really interesting addition, right? So um, also uh, Jennifer Kretschmer wasn't there. I was expecting that we might see more from Jennifer Kretschmer. But I think, you know, like... I think Dungeons and Dragons really tries to be woke, but uh, woke will bite you. And I, I really feel like Jennifer Kretschmer, she was in a lot of conversations around, like she was in a conversation, she had some material in uh, Candlekeep Mysteries, and there was some pushback against that, and I think she kind of spoke unkindly about D&D in that. I think that might be one of the reasons why we're not seeing her uh, more frequently, why not we're not seeing her on jobs. The other thing that I have realized, especially like uh, I listen to Tales Abadia and Sean Merwin, and they, when you listen to them, you know, like week in, week out, they wrote for Dungeons and Dragons. But it's very clear that like, when you write for Dungeons and Dragons, if you don't knock a ball out of the park, they won't take your call, right? Like you, you be, they be, you be like, hey, can I talk to Ray Winninger? Uh, no, you cannot. Or <laughs> like, it's like you get, it's a once and done. Unless you know, it's very hard to get in and get work done. So I was incredibly impressed with Wizards Presents, and I am just. I have to say, I really don't like that Ray Winninger got, got... I don't think he should be in that position. I really don't. And, and the reason why is I don't understand why on earth Dungeons & Dragons knowingly would have chosen the sixth middle-aged white guy in a row to do the same job, which is what they've done for design lead. It really needs to go to a person of color. It really needs to go to a um, a female at, at some point, you know, uh, this it's just getting ridiculous. We're 48 years in, and we're all supposed to believe that six middle-aged white guys in a row were the best people to lead d and I don't believe it. I, I, you can tell me if you do, but I certainly don't, right? Like, I, I think there's... that It's a problem, and it's got to get solved, right? And, but, so, I have to say that every time I will talk about Ray Winninger, because I don't want it forgotten, right? Like, but the reality is, he's crushing it. He is crushing it, right? Like, because, I mean, I, to tell the truth... The best boss I ever had, I about 15, 20 years ago, he told me, you spend a third of your time deciding what you're going to do, a third of your time doing it, and a third of your time telling people what you did, right? And I was like, that's crazy. I, I literally laughed at the table. We were at like kind of a business dinner. I laughed at the table. That dude was dead on right. He knew exactly what he was talking about, right? And the reality is, uh, Ray Winninger's telling people what he's going to do and what he's doing and what he did. He is crushing it on communication. I've never seen, there has never been a Dungeons & Dragons design lead that did a better job of communicating what was actually going to happen in the rule set than Ray Winninger. I, I don't like saying it, but it's the reality. He's crushing it. Oh, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.